All right, so today we have Piero with us to talk about how we use Replit in production. Uh, thank you for joining me, Piero. Uh, uh, thank you for inviting me. Perhaps right here. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so I understand that we use, you know, Replit. We, we at Replit use Replit in production for a few different things, like the blog and the docs. And uh, you've been working on the blog, right? Correct. I've been working on the blog recently, uh, specifically with um, adding dark theme to it and also um, adding categories to it. Right. Dark theme and categories. And uh, what framework is it built in? Um, there isn't a framework that it's built on. It's just raw CSS, JS, and HTML. Uh, what about the back end? Oh, the back end um, is it's a Node.js server running, or the back end is a Node.js REPL running Express. Um, and then it has some test and code to parse uh, Markdown and stuff like that. Right. So it converts like Markdown files into HTML files, right? Correct. Right. How does it do it? Um, there's a uh, library it uses. Um, can't remember the name of it. Uh, uh, do you want to share your screen? And yeah, show I'll, the ripple? Sh I'll share my screen. Yeah, we'll do that. Screen. Um, so this is the blog ripple um, right here, and I believe it's uh, marked that we're using to parse our markdown into HTML, which is then served to the website. Um, it does this in cycles. Uh, so there's this function called build post cache, and it basically creates a cache of the, um, it creates a post cache of the uh, posts. Um, so they're loaded in RAM, which also makes it extremely fast to respond since having to um, parse all the markdown and everything every single time somebody clicks on a link would take an extremely long amount of time and would bring down the REPL pretty quickly. So that's a pretty handy feature. And it rebuilds every 60 seconds. So we don't even have to restart this REPL if somebody makes like a tiny change to a post or something like that. Nice. Uh, and is that cache stored? Uh, like, where is it stored? Oh, it's it's simply stored uh, in a variable. Uh, so it's posts. And that's, that's it. Uh, so in RAM. Right. Uh, and there is Cloudflare on top of it too, right? Yes. So we have it running on a normal REPL, but then when you're actually viewing the site, um, it's being served by Cloudflare. Uh, ooh, that's not what I want. So if you look at the certificate, it's Cloudflare. Um, and that just helps um, helps with caching further. So not every image and not every um, visit to this page is having to um, hit this REPL. So if we have a few thousand or a hundred thousand people using the set at, at one time, it doesn't overload the site and take it down. Um, so that's handy. Cool. And uh, for for the particular like aspects of the blog you've been working on, work on you the, you set up like your own REPL besides this main REPL, right? Yes, I set up a like, different REPL. Um, so I have the second REPL, which I've been doing a lot of a lot of the development in. Um, um, and it's a full copy of the site, but it has whatever changes I've decided to implement. Um, so for example, um, there's a small change that I just was working on where uh, when hovering over the theme button, your cursor wouldn't become a pointer. And it's really handy to use the GitHub integration to uh, make changes, not affect production, and not accidentally take down the blog. Um, and then I can later push to GitHub and later um, pull from the main REPL or pull in the main REPL to keep everything synced, um, almost like pushing to production. Right. So, and uh, you've been using both the sidebar GitHub uh, integration and the terminal, right? Correct. So most of the time, um, when I'm in my other REPL, I can easily push and pull. But since the util REPL, I'm not like an admin. I'm just I'm technically a guest or something like that. Um, the the util team, I have to use. Um, I have to for pushing and pulling. 
I have to use the command line. And it is pretty straightforward. It's just regular git. So this won't do anything, but I can do git pull origin master. Um, and I would have to put in my credentials right now, um, which I don't really want to do uh, on camera, you know, recording all my credentials. But it's simply yeah. easy. You can you can see how easy it was. It's just username, a token, um, and it's as simple as that. So regardless of using the built-in tools or this, um, it's very simple. I can't really, it'll error out, see, it has an error, but it's pretty easy to use. Um, you can select a branch, you can revert locally. Um, just pushing and pulling can sometimes get a bit weird. Mm. Yeah, I guess if, if one doesn't work, like you, you can always switch to the other one. Yeah, so, so if, yeah, if for whatever reason one doesn't work, the other one's always there. Uh, yeah. And a lot of people are also familiar with Git, so it's good that they can use Git if that's what they're more familiar with instead of using the sidebar. Yeah, yeah, so, and uh, just to kind of recap, you have this main repo that's uh, the product, that's kind of like the production repo, and you have this development repo. You develop there, mm -hmm. push to yes. GitHub, and like send a PR yeah. pull request. Mm -hmm. And when it's merged, you pull from the main repo, right? Yes. So I push to our GitHub repository, make a pull request, and then pull on this repo. Uh, so pretty straightforward. Nice. Uh, oh, yeah. So I also wanted to ask you about the flag thing, uh, how you put mm -hmm. everything behind a flag. Do you want to like, show the viewers how you do that? Sure. I'll show the viewers how I did that. Um, when it comes to the blog, there's a few things that go on. So um, if you're on the blog right now, uh, as of this, when we're recording this, the t uh, they're in beta. So you have to do beta equals 1, and it shows tags. So how this happens, or how this works, is that when somebody writes a blog post, for example, this one I wrote a little while ago, they add a category or multiple categories to it. So this falls under the projects category, this post right here, but I can also give it the news category. Uh, I'll go into depth in a little bit of how that works. So let me just restart the REPL so it rebuilds the cache. And then if I hit news, um, Oh, wait, no, projects, since normally the first one that pops up is what it uses. So eng, which is a, uh, it's like the parent of projects, and then also news pop up in it. And if I click on projects, everything else with that tag also shows up. Um, so how this works is that we have some funky little code. Um, it's actually in the tags header. Um, so there's a list of categories, and it basically builds out this bar right here. And when you click one, it calls um, this function called switch category. And essentially what happens is it, um, essentially what it does is it first hides every single category, or it hides everything which doesn't have that category. And then it makes sure to show anything within that category. And that essentially um, could help make sure. So if something has um, two categories assigned to it, it might not get it. It'll it won't get hidden when only one of the categories is selected um, on the main page. And then it has uh, thus some special styling. So it's it's I don't know how to explain it that there's comments here. Um, and then it also has some special code. So if there isn't anything in a specific category, it gives a, a little bit of an error message, but not really, just saying there aren't any posts within mm. this category. Yep. And for the uh, thing in the URL, beta equals mm -hmm. one, how does that work? Um, so that works. So when you hit the... Um, so when you visit something, it's... Um, it's a query uh, parameter. So either the query, um, if the query parameter exists, pass it along. If it isn't, set it to zero. Um, this just helps with some things not working, as I'll show you later. So if we go to index.ejs, there's some code in here. So if beta equals one, um, it then includes the tags header. 
I don't just realized that there's some leftover code right here from when we had theme control um, in beta as well. Um, so if beta equals one as a query parameter, it passes along and makes sure to include the tag setter itself. And this is also available on post.ejs, uh, no, postpage.ejs. Um, right around, is it? No, no, it's on post.ejs, I think, somewhere. So no, it's on index. Oh, let me look actually, because we have a search function. This is actually really handy. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. Oh, it's on post page WJS. I see. I just couldn't see it very easily due to my code formatting. So if um, the beta exists, um, it loads this script, which is when you click on a post. That's the actual this header right here, and. Um, uh, it also, yeah, that's all the script is. And then it also um, loads the post itself. Um, so then when you click on one of these, you know, it takes you back. Well, that's not good. Yeah, I see. Oh, this 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 was actually in use. Uh, uh, there yeah. we go. <laughs> I thought yeah. that, was, that wasn't in use. Okay, but it is. Yeah, no worries. Don't randomly remove code during interviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Especially anyway. critical stuff. Yeah. Anyway, this like flag thing, you know, beta equals one. This whole mm -hmm. thing is for people to try out the feature without us pushing it to like everyone, right? Correct. Yeah. So yeah. the dark theme was there for a while, and I could easily send somebody the beta link um, uh, when you needed it to have dark theme. Uh, so, um, so I could send it like that. But um, so they could give me feedback and just sharing with people. Um, so that's very helpful. And then just for the, your normal person, they don't see it. So it doesn't affect their experience on the site. Mm. Nice. Uh, cool. Um, um, how's your experience being like working you know, with Replit in production, like as opposed to working with other technologies? Um, so working with Replit, I'd say it's like really nice because um, working with other technologies, if I'm like hosting it locally to do my development, you know, I have to run a command in my console every single time I want to, you know, rerun the site. And it it might not seem like a lot, but it's just more convenient to hit Control Enter, restart it, and it's just there instead of having to run the command, go into my browser, refresh the page. Um, and then sometimes even refresh the page with a cache wipe, um, just to see that like a small change that I've made. When using something like Replit, it's done very quickly. And then also pushing it to Git or GitHub is extremely easy um, with the sidebar, um, especially with making my branches, pushing my changes, and then I can deal with uh, pull requests on GitHub, like most people do. Nice, cool. Uh, I feel like we've covered a pretty good ground already. All right. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Piero. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for um, having me. Yeah, no worries.